the Adidas Adios Pro 3. We've reached a very important milestone in this racing shoes career of 300 plus miles. Let's talk about the shoe at this point, what's working, what's not working, and what the future for this model of shoe is for my lineup. Let's get into it. So before we get into the video, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, if you're ready to subscribe to watching content. Thanks so much, love you guys a lot. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and subscribe for all sorts of other updates and things like that. So without further ado, let's begin. Specs for the shoe, somewhere where you can see them and they're contrasting with the background, as you can say. So yeah, first things first before we check out what the outsoles look like on this thing. This will be probably the first race shoe in the history of this YouTube channel that has gotten to 300 plus miles and is still, in my opinion, usable. Now, we're going to we're gonna see what's going on in the outsoles. We're going to talk about the carbon fiber uh, rods in the shoes, which, again, it's a whole other topic to discuss. And, um, yeah, we're just going to see what the future holds for this shoe and where it's kind of varied in my 200-plus mile review. So, yeah, let's take a look at the intriguing features of this shoe at this time. Here we got the left foot, which has got a lot going on. And then the most interesting, most wonderful thing to look at is this right foot. As you can see, we're going to start with this one, as a matter of fact, because of how much wear and tear has already kind of gone on it. So, historically on the channel, as we've discussed many of times before, the right foot tends to supinate slightly as a run form mechanic that I've seen that you know, despite me going through run form assessment and, uh, you know, doctors and just going through the drills of correcting both the supination but also my marathon running form, there's still going to be some wear and tear that's residual on this shoe that's going to outshine some of the improvements in the form, right? So if everything goes as planned, if I can get my next pair of uh, Adios Pro 3s to 300 plus miles and they don't look like this shoe, then we did pretty well, all right? So that's the run form assessment piece, uh, the Catch-22. But look what we got, right? It just totally chomped up. The first time I've ever had an Adidas shoe get to this point where the continental rubber has started deteriorating at such a level. I mean, look at it, right? The rubber is still in, you know, good shape. It's not totally burnt off or anything, but as I continue running in it, you're going to see that you're just going to start cutting into it more as like where I'm striking is usually in this area of the foot. But as I'm learning now and trying to get to that point in my running form, we're trying to get a lot more mid foot strike. And as a result, you can see that I'm experiencing more wear and tear in this particular area of the shoe, which is what I want uh, when it comes to marathon running form. Now, when we're talking about like a 5k or a 10k and we have more of like that sprint style of running it's kind of you just go hog wild right that's going to be more of your mid to four foot striking area of the shoe um not too many major improvements that can be done there before we correct i would say the marathon piece of it so once we can get the volume kind of rolling in we can get the real like tiny smidgen pieces of it kind of sorted out in the shorter races i digress point there is we are tearing up the rubber on this side of the shoe and starting to crack into the central area of the shoe as well and i think um it's hard to say yeah no actually it is confirmed this is a carbon rod that is exposed at this time just barely so you can see that rod right there if i can like kind of scratch it right there you can see it is exposed i could be striking it at times and it looks like confirmed i am probably striking it if my foot is in this area of the shoe so this is going to run into an issue I had with my early versions of the Vaporfly, which was when the plate of the Vaporfly was totally exposed, and I was smashing the plate into the ground. Not only did it make a loud noise, but I had massive repercussions in my ankles because you're basically just like slapping the ground with like a carbon compound instead of foam rubber, and when you have that forefoot strike, it's putting a lot of impact on your ankles, uh, part of, I would say, like your foot especially, but ankles were like really bothering me for the longest time. So I think the days are numbered with this particular shoe because of this wear and tear. I had a whole different opinion before I started this video as to where I can go, but we'll, we'll retouch on that towards the end. So continuing on, you can see in the yellow uh, continental rubber area, totally ripped off as well. 
Uh, that might be as a case of like whenever I would roll and you'd have that kind of toe off uh, rolling feature of the shoe. I might have maybe clipped a rock or something or just over time this area of the shoe just started ripping. So either or or a com combination of both. The shoe is like two major wear and tear pieces kind of showing and it's starting to get bad. So where it's raining, it's pouring on this shoe. It's almost ready to be fully retired at this stage in time. So that's kind of what's going on here. And our left foot, kind of similar story to be completely honest with you. You can see where the yellow uh, continental rubber is starting to slowly bleed into the black rubber here. We can see that the carbon wire or carbon energy rods are starting to get exposed right here from the wear and tear of the shoe itself. I can see where the shoe is starting to cave in in the central portion right there. Maybe there's like a, some kind of uh, shadowing we can do. I'm looking specifically right here that like the shoe is just starting to collapse in from the foam fatigue. Maybe just structural integrity is kind of falling apart there. But we don't have that same opening in this area quite yet, but it is getting there. So there may be the slightest of supinations occurring in the Adios Pro 3 at this time, just to kind of monitor. And again, the midfoot area of this shoe here, as expected, as my form is starting to improve a little bit, is taking a bit of uh, wear and tear, just not enough to make some sort of blunt impact necessarily in the shoe. So that's kind of what's going on on the bottoms of the shoes. And I did in fact take this on a 10 mile long run, long run quote unquote, um, on the weekend when I was running with it. And I actually did that maybe twice. Uh, one time was just this past weekend and two weekends ago I did it also. And I had my first ever con in this shoe, which was related sort of to what I experienced in the Alpha Fly 3s. Was it the 3s? No, it was the 2s. The Alpha Fly 2s, where part of, I think it would mostly happen in this foot. There's like, yeah, you can even see it here too. This toe box guard area of the foot, you see where like there's the mesh and there's the toe guard. This toe guard for some reason, whether it was just a buildup of salt or something within the shoe or maybe the tightness of the shoe or how my foot was slamming in it, I started getting massive blisters on my pinky toes in this area of the shoe. So it could have been a lockdown issue, but it was the first time I've ever had it where I would end up blistering both sides of my feet on this particular shoe. So it only happened once during the run, I believe, and it was during a 10 miler. Um, it was a fairly fast run with a lot of, I'd say, up and downhill kind of segments. More downhills than anything. So I'm thinking with downhills, your foot's kind of smashing the front of the shoe as you're kind of braking while running at the same time. So it's more likely that I was probably just smashing this area a lot more. But it's not happened in any other race day shoe that I've had. And I'm kind of glad it happened in this shoe rather than something like a Vaporfly uh, Next% percent, uh, or Next% percent 2 in this case. Uh, where I think the shoe would have just been in a more, I guess, I, I would have scrutinized that shoe a lot more than something like this, where it would have been 250 plus miles at the time. This upper, similar to the Boston 11 and kind of resembling features of the Boston 12, like I would have expected it to be, you know, a little bit more streamlined. And as a result, some tightness in areas of the shoe where the impact on my actual toes would be a little bit more... Uh, profound, I guess we could say. That's a little long-winded thought, but the idea there is like, I was expecting the blisters, I was just kind of sad that it happened. Let's put it that way. Uh, Lockdown-wise for the shoe, it's not bad at this time, just again, with me, when I like take off the shoes, I uh, like loosen them a lot, and then retightening them always becomes kind of a gamble to whether I get it right or not. Um, in the new pair of Adios Pro 3s that I have, it's just a case of me tightening them a little bit too much. So I have to kind of loosen these in the middle of my run. But the old pair, it's a case of just getting the lock kind of sorted out. So I'm always wondering if like there's a mesh kind of issue going on with the shoe. And at this time, I don't see it. There's no like uh, ripping or kind of stretching going on anywhere that would have indicated that maybe the fitting of the shoe is just off. It's just a case of perhaps just loosening it so much that uh, essentially getting it right two times in a row, like getting that lightning to strike twice is not as easy, I would say. So that's all of the major spec pieces here. But now performance wise, kind of what I was discussing and my opinion has kind of changed while I, in the middle of making this video essentially is that I was going to say this shoe can probably ride another 100 miles before I take it out of my official training lineup 
And what I've had it here for was the daily speed kind of trainer uh, in its current uh, current condition. I don't want to race in this shoe because I have the uh, not newer model, but I have the exact model with different colorway, and I've already used it for a race and whatnot. So I just wanted to keep this shoe in the lineup so I remember the feel of the race day shoe so I can conserve uh, the rubber on it, the foam, and all that. Uh, but seeing how the carbon uh, rods are now exposed sort of on the outside areas of both shoes respectively, um, it's going to get to the point where I'm going to start hearing that carbon rod impact on the ground directly as this foam and this rubber starts kind of ripping more and more. And that's going to shorten the life of the shoe to maximum. Because I talked about this also before, like that the shoe will probably go on for a little while. I think maximum 400 miles at this stage of the game is where the shoe's going to get to before major red flags start occurring. And like, I may even have to like back up on some statements I've had previously. Like, so remember, I maybe made this for the 250 plus mile review, um, or the 200 where there was like a cracking in the shoe at some point and i wonder still like maybe if the carbon rods cracked at some point in the shoe somewhere and now they've kind of situated somewhere else and that's why we don't hear the cracking um maybe it's possible that uh after i wash the shoes maybe there's some water in the shoe that's kind of providing some kind of uh unintended support on the rods it's hard to say what's going on without like directly opening this thing up but um, I said there and then that like the shoe is probably going to be retired fairly soon. And then as I went through the next 100 miles in the shoe, I realized like, hey, there's still plenty of life in this thing. I'm just not going to race in it in fear of it breaking to a point in the middle of a race where it's like hard stop. You know, whereas like if I do break this on a training run, I can like walk to wherever I need to get to, change shoes and whatnot and like call it a day. So here, like based on what I'm seeing right now, I think the lifespan is going to get cut a little bit shorter. Like if I, if I'd be lucky, I think if I put an extra hundred miles on this thing at this time. So that's kind of the story with the Adios Pro Three, as we see it. I've really enjoyed my time with this particular pair of shoes a lot more than I think uh, some race shoes I've had in the past. And it's kind of sad that this particular pair's time is coming to an end. But again, that's just how the world of running is a lot of people just rotate shoes months in months out um so that's just kind of the name of the game i'm just kind of again telling you my experience with these things as i kind of get through it with the chicago marathon training and speaking of like the official training is going to be starting fairly soon uh, a few weeks from now so i need a good reliable race day shoe for when that entire season officially begins but yeah if you have any questions, comments, concerns with the shoe uh, right now, or you have different opinions, or like, you know, anything you concur with that you've seen thus far, just let me know in the comments below. But uh, yeah, I think we're gonna end the review right here. So thanks again for watching. See you guys in the next one.